how to create your own WireGuard VPN server using an Ubuntu Linux VPS. In this video, I'll take you through the complete process of setting up your WireGuard VPN server. The very first thing we'll be doing is setting up our VPS server, also known as a virtual private server. The server host provider for our VPS that we're going to be using for today's video is called DigitalOcean. We'll then go through the installation of the WireGuard client. You'll install the relevant WireGuard VPN client for your operating system. We'll then log into our DigitalOcean virtual private server using an SSH client called Putty. While we're logged into our DigitalOcean VPS, we'll install WireGuard using NYR's GitHub repository called WireGuard-install. This GitHub repository will allow us to install WireGuard on our server. After we have installed WireGuard on our server, we can now connect to our VPN and check our IP address on a website called What Is My IP Address, where it will tell us our current IPv4 address. The IPv4 address displayed here should match your DigitalOcean server's IP address. If it does, then your WireGuard VPN is working correctly. Let's begin the process now by creating our DigitalOcean VPS. The first thing you'll need to do is navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link, and it will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. I'll put this link in the video description below. Once you're here, if you don't already have a DigitalOcean account, you can create one by filling in the email address field, picking a password, and then clicking on create free account. You can also sign up with your Google account or GitHub account. Now I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm going to click on sign in. I'm now on my DigitalOcean dashboard. Your $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits will be at the top right hand corner of your dashboard. Once you're here, hover over the green create button and left click on it. From the drop down list, at the very top, you should see droplets. This service allows you to create cloud servers, also known as virtual private servers or VPSs. Click on droplets. Droplets are basically what DigitalOcean calls its virtual private servers. In the droplet creation page, we'll first need to choose a region. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with Amsterdam. Once you've selected the region, scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. Click on OS if it already isn't selected, and then click on Ubuntu. Once you've selected Ubuntu, you'll need to pick the version of Ubuntu. Click on this drop down arrow and select the latest LTS version of Ubuntu, which at the time of recording of this video is 22.04 LTS x64. Once you have selected your Ubuntu version, scroll down until you see where it says choose size. You have two types of droplets. The first is shared CPU and the other is dedicated CPU. We're going to be going with shared CPU, which only contains basic. Click on basic to select it. Scroll down to where you see CPU options. You have one regular option and two premium options for CPU. The regular comes with an SSD and the others come with an NVMe SSD. For your VPN, the regular option should be more than enough. You'll now need to select a plan. You can click on show all plans to see all the plan options. However, if you're only making a VPN for you and a couple of other people, then I recommend going with a $6 a month plan, which gives you one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabytes SSD disk, and a thousand gigabytes or one terabyte of bandwidth. Click on this plan to select it. Continue scrolling down, until you see where it says choose authentication method. Click on password and then click on the box under create root password. Here you'll need to choose a root password for your droplet. This is what you're going to be using to log into your DigitalOcean droplet using your SSH client. Once you've picked a password and meet all of DigitalOcean's password requirements, scroll down until you see where it says host name. Here you'll need to give your droplet a name, so just delete what's currently in there by default and then enter a droplet name. So I'm going to call my droplet WireGuard dash VPN. Once you've chosen a host name, click on create droplet. Your digital ocean droplet will then begin spinning up. While our VPS is being created, I'm going to click on my other tab here and you'll need to open up a new tab and navigate to the following URL address, wireguard.com slash install slash. Once you're here, you'll be on the WireGuard client installation section. Here you can pick your WireGuard client for your particular OS. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be going with the Windows installer here. However, if you're on Mac, you go with this option. For Android, you'll just simply open up the Google Play Store on your device. And for iPhones, just simply open up the App Store on your iPhone. There's also many Linux distributions if you scroll down to the very bottom. Now, as I said, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click on download Windows installer. The WireGuard installer will then be downloaded. Let's install our WireGuard client. So I'm just going to click on this downloads icon here at the top right hand corner of my browser and under recent download history I'm going to click on the WireGuard installer.exe to open it and start the installation. I'll then be greeted with the user account control because I'm on Windows which asks me do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You have two options no or yes. I'm going to click on yes as I want to proceed with the WireGuard installation. As you can see WireGuard has now been installed 
as the WireGuard VPN client has opened. I'm going to minimize this client for the time being. Let's go back to our DigitalOcean tab and check on our DigitalOcean droplets progress. As you can see, our DigitalOcean droplet has now been created and it's up and running, as you can see by the green active status symbol here. To the right hand side of our DigitalOcean droplets name is our server's IP address. We're going to copy this IP address by navigating to the right and clicking on the word copy. This will copy it to our clipboard. Next, open up another browser tab and navigate to the following URL address putty.org. Once you're here, click on download putty. Like I said at the start of this video, putty is an SSH client, which allows us to log into our DigitalOcean server using the SSH protocol. Putty is an SSH client available for these operating systems. If your operating system isn't listed here, you'll need to use an alternative for your operating system. There are various different alternatives available for you to use. For me, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be downloading the 64-bit x86 putty installer. Now, I'm not going to take you through the installation of putty, as I already have uploaded a video which takes you through the process of installing putty. I'll link it in the video description below and as a card at the top right hand corner of this video. Once you've installed putty, minimize your browser to be taken to your desktop. As you can see, my putty shortcut is on my desktop here. If it isn't, just simply search for putty in the search box at the bottom of your taskbar. Once you've found the putty app, just open it. So I'm going to double click on the putty shortcut here to open it. In the host name, you're going to paste in the IP address of your DigitalOcean server into the host name or IP address address section. You're going to be leaving the port as 22 and SSH as the connection type. All that's left to do now is to click on open to start the connection. You'll then be greeted with this putty security alert which says the server's host key is not cached in your registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now this is a normal putty security alert as it is the first time you're connecting to your digital ocean droplet. You have three options. You can either click on cancel, connect once or accept. I'm going to be clicking on accept as I want to add the host key to Putty's cache and carry on with the connection. Once you've clicked on accept, maximize the Putty terminal window. So you're going to be logging in as root, so type the word root and then hit enter on your keyboard. And for the password, it's going to be your root password that you chose for your DigitalOcean droplet. So just type it in here. Once you've typed it in, hit enter on your keyboard and you'll be logged into your DigitalOcean droplet. Once you're logged in, open up your browser and then open up another tab on your browser and navigate to the following URL address, github.com slash nyr slash wireguard dash install. Once you're here, scroll down until you see where it says installation. We're going to be copying the wireguard installation script command right here. So all I'm going to do is copy everything from the word wget. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to open back up my putty terminal window. I'm going to right click to paste in the install script command and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. The WireGuard installation script will then commence. It first asks you which IPv4 address should be used. You have three options here and as you can see the script already chooses for us by default. For the IPv4 address it has chosen number one. So if you wanted to go with this one you'd enter number one, number two for this and number three for this or you can leave it blank and it will go with the default choice. So I'm going to go with the default choice. So all I'm going to do is hit enter on my keyboard. Next, it will ask what port should WireGuard listen to? By default, it's going with port 51820. This is the port that I'm also going to be going with. So I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard. Next, we need to enter a name for the first client. So the client name can be anything. So I'm going to call my first client, client one, and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. It will then ask you to select a DNS server for the client. As you can see, number one is current system resolvers two is Google, three is 1.1.1.1, four is OpenDNS, five is Quad9, and six is AdGuard. The DNS server that this script selects is number one. We're also going to be going with number one, and that is the default choice. So all we're going to do is hit enter on our keyboard to go with the default. Finally, the WireGuard installation is ready to begin. All we need to do is press any key on our keyboard. Let's go with enter again. The WireGuard VPN will then begin installing on our DigitalOcean server. If you're greeted with the following purple screen on your putty command line, just press tab on your keyboard once to highlight the word OK, and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be greeted with a QR code, which which contains your WireGuard client configuration. And underneath that, it says finished. And then it shows you where the client one configuration file is located on your VPS server. And it says new clients can be added by running the script again. Now the QR code is good for devices which have a camera, such as a mobile device like a smartphone. So if you have installed the WireGuard client on your Android or iPhone, you can simply scan this QR code to import the client configuration file. If you're on a desktop, such as a PC, I'll show you how to get the configuration information from the configuration file. But before that, let's add 
another client by right-clicking in the PuTTY terminal window to paste in the wget install script command once again and begin the process of adding another client. So I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard to start this process. So as you can see at the very top, it says WireGuard is already installed. And then we have four options. So we can add a new client, remove an existing client, remove WireGuard or exit. Let's add another client. So I'm going to press one on my keyboard to select add a new client option. And then I'm going to hit enter. We'll need to provide a name for our client. So let's go with client two. And then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. We'll need to select a DNS server for the client. Let's go with the default option. So I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard. And then again, the client configuration QR code will be displayed that you can simply scan if you want. And then underneath that, the .conf file for client two is also available in the following directory. Keep in mind that each client configuration file is for one specific device only. You cannot use the same client configuration file for all your devices. So if you have three devices, you'll need to create and add three different client configuration files for each device. First, let's check if these client configuration files have been generated. So all I'm going to do is type the two letters ls to list the files and folders in the current directory that we're in. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard now to execute the command. And as you can see, we have two configuration files. We have client1.conf and client2.conf. To see the client configuration information in a conf file, what you'll need to do is type the following command, cat or cat space, and then the name of your client configuration file. Let's go with client1 here. So I'm going to type client one dot conf. It will be exactly the same for your other client configuration file. You'll just need to type cat space and then the name of that configuration file. Once you've typed in the following command, hit enter on your keyboard. WireGuard will then display the client configuration file information. What you'll need to do is highlight from the word interface all the way to where it says persistent keep alive. This will automatically copy the highlighted information to your clipboard. Once you've done that, just minimize the putty terminal window. Now open back up your WireGuard VPN client. Look for where it says add tunnel at the bottom left hand corner, click on the arrow next to it, and then click on add empty tunnel. Once you've done that, delete everything that's in this text box here by highlighting it and then deleting it, and then right click anywhere in this text box and click on paste to paste in your client configuration information. Once you've done that, you'll need to give your new tunnel a name. So I'm just going to click on this text box here and I'm going to call it Amsterdam as that is the current location of our digital ocean droplet. Once done, click on save. And as you can see, our tunnel was added. To turn on our WireGuard VPN, all we need to do is click on the word activate. Once done, our WireGuard VPN will be active and running. Now we can minimize our WireGuard client. We can go back to our browser and open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address what is my IP address .com, and then hit enter on your keyboard on this web page under my IP address the IPv4 address should be the same IP address of your digital ocean droplet now if we go back to our digital ocean droplet you can see the IP address of 167.172.42.119 is the same IP address that is displayed in the whatismyipaddress.com website. This tells us that we are successful in creating our WireGuard VPN. And if we look to the right for extra confirmation, there's a map location for our IP address, which is in the Netherlands, in the city of Amsterdam. The ISP is DigitalOcean, which is our server host provider. The city is Amsterdam. This is the region and the country is the Netherlands. All right, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to create your own WireGuard VPN server using an Ubuntu Linux VPS. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Wait, is it so hard to let you go?